welcome to this talk on how to target how to access the foramen and the disc herniation so this talk essentially forms the basis of transforaminal access by gore system now let us understand that we are doing this on the basis of our clinical assessment and a very clear cut understanding that the pain in degenerative lumbar spine has arisen from the structural failure which commonly is in the form of annular tear in the posterior annulus if it is in the central part of the annulus it commonly gives back pain if it is in the posterior lateral part of the annulus it commonly gives back and leg pain and from the older style of assessing the patient by analyzing the narration of the patient examining the patient doing the imaging studies and invasive imaging we have tried to correlate the pain with the pathology we have also gone one step further by doing a in vivo endoscopic visualization of the pathoanatomy in that symptomatic degenerative lumbar spine and we have confirmed that a nerve supply of the structure would determine the presentation of the patient the neurovascular system reaction to the structure failure will determine whether the patient would come with back pain or sciatic pain after visualizing this pathoanatomy we will like to confirm that we are dealing with a annular tear or a herniation or of course in the other uh, system in the other uh, causes we can also go in for the facet denervation as had been mentioned before or we can go for the lateral canal stenosis as we'll be talking later so we have also covered the non operative conservative treatment by use of needles but here we are going to talk about how we go in the foramen and how we utilize our philosophy to address the issue of disc herniation now after understanding the pathoanatomy by visualization of the pathoanatomy in vivo where the patient is awake and aware and we are using our system under local anesthesia we are going in for the next step or the basics of how do we address this. so now we are looking at this patient who is a female age of 28 and has come to us with severe back pain and leg pain and she is having a central herniation at l45 and the patient had great difficulty in getting up from bed every morning she used to take about an hour and a half to come up from the bed and get going for the day after analysis of the sciatic image when we look at the cross section we will find that there is a central herniation now here if we try to join the under surface of the facet on both the sides and if we find that we have lost the concavity of the disc and the fragment is bulging even above this limit this line joining the under surface of the facet then we know that this is our target so this was a central herniation at 4 5 and now we are going to target it by our methodology the patient symptoms were more on the left side so we are going to access this from the left side mind you that this red line is supposed to tell you the axis which we are going to take we are going to be paraspinal here go about 10 cm from the midline go below the facet land in the center of the disc and get this fragment out so now is going to be a step by step description of how we go about it again as a matter of concept let us understand that we are not going to be transperitoneal we are not going to be retroperitoneal we are not going to be posterior midline but we are going to be transforaminal which is paraspinal intramuscular retroperitoneal and transforaminal below the facet so here what we do is we make the patient lie prone now i am standing on the left side of the patient the patient's head is on this side the patient's legs are on the right side of the picture and the belly is down and the back is up so this is clearly understood and then i mark the midline i put the marker on the back of the patient i look inside the fluoroscopic image and mark this midline when i mark this midline the image which i get is something like this this is a marker which is situated exactly in the midline what does it mean is you see both the pedicles are equidistant from the midline and this is true ap 
picture which we get in the fluoroscopy. This means you are absolutely in the midline. Then we put the marker on the disc space as we see the disc space. Now here we are aware that the patient has a lumbar lordosis and therefore the disc space is tilted towards the head. But we mark the disc space as we see it and make a marking on the back of the patient. Then we put the marker on the lateral aspect of the patient and we put the marker with the tip of the marker to the front of the disc and then see the inclination of the disc. When we put the marker on the lateral, it is almost parallel to the end plate and going right up to the front of the disc and we see the inclination. This is not exactly vertical but little tilted towards the head. This inclination is marked on the skin that is the lordosis is marked on the skin and we see that this is not vertical but tilted towards the head. Then we measure this distance that is from the front of the disc right up to the back of the patient. As we mentioned before, this distance in an Indian patient or a patient who has an average height of 5 feet 6 inches would be close to 9.5 to 10 centimeters. If the herniation which we are dealing with like in this patient is more central where you need to go below the facet right up to the center of the disc, you can take the distance to be 12.5 centimeters from the midline or Standard distance which we take from the midline would be about 10 centimeters as we are seeing in this demonstration case. Now, once you have marked this tilt and we have taken the same distance from the midline, then we make the point of entry marked on the skin with a cross. So to sum up in short, we had done a marking of the midline, then marking of the disc space as we see it in AP, then we put the, mar put the marker on the lateral front of the disc, tilt in the lordosis, then take this tilt into consideration and mark the spot above the line, measure this distance from the midline, take the same distance from the midline to this spot and make a cross. So now we have identified our point of entry. Then we give lignocaine to the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, numb the skin and the subcutaneous tissue because it does contain a lot of nerve endings and it is painful. And then we put the needle, the trajectory of the needle is such that in AP x-ray we try to look at the direction of the needle and then we will be looking in the lateral x-ray for the depth of the needle. So here the needle is supposed to travel right up to the foramen and in AP we try to see that the needle goes right up to the medial pedicle line that is the line joining the medial borders of the pedicle which indirectly is the lateral border of the dural sac. This is matched by a lateral x-ray where the tip of the needle is exactly on the lateral view is exactly on the posterior annulus just stretching the annulus and preferably in the lower part of the foramen because this upper part of the foramen contains the nerve just below the superior pedicle. So if you remain in the lower part of the foramen closer to the lower end plate then you are very very safe. The common question which is asked here is how are you sure that you are not injuring the nerve. The answer is if you are in the lower part of the foramen away from the superior pedicle then you can definitely be assured that you are not going to injure the nerve. In addition, we say that you must study the MRI before the surgery so that you are sure that you are dealing with a normal lay of the nerve and there is no conjoint root or root anomaly which will create problems for you in the foramen. Then we imagine that suppose we enter in this way and go right up to the center how we will look. So we push the needle right up to the center and in the lateral after the entry we find that the needle is just lying below the posterior annulus. We are not at the center of the disc here but we are below the posterior annulus. So we are in the posterior quadrant of the disc. Then we remove the stillet of the needle and we take the guide wire in hand and this is a very important step where we measure the guide wire against the stillet. Then we put the guide wire through the needle and we slowly remove the needle with a rotatory movement, the guide wire stays inside. It is important to note that the guide wire and the needle should glide easily, the guide wire inside the needle. If it does not glide properly because of bending or kinks, then the whole thing will come out and you will lose your effort of putting the needle in the right place in the first place. So let the guide wire be very smoothly gliding inside the needle. Then we make, <coughs> excuse me.
we make a skin incision and we put this dilator. Now, this dilator is a blood instrument and has two holes and we use the central hole over the guide wire. This dilator is then pushed and this push, this push is such that we go right up to the intertransverse area and this tip of the dilator which you see to be black is 15 millimeters in length. Then we tap the dilator right up to the center of the disc where the tip goes right up to the center and this black is almost inside the disc. There is a medial pedicle line and the center of the disc is accommodating this whole black which means we have covered the 15 millimeters of the distance or 1.5 centimeters and here we find the, the dilator tip in the lateral is in the posterior quadrant of the disc. 